Hello, this is Tim Carter for Live For Guitar with a review of Alloy 2, the second incarnation of the Alloy Channel Strip plugin from Isotope. I'll be giving a brief overview of the plugin tools and functions, and then let you hear Alloy 2 in a mix that I've produced to spotlight functional elements and strengths of the plugin. I'm going to play a static loop in the background so you get a visual idea of the workflow and monitoring as it's presented in the graphic interface. Starting to the right, we have the input-output meters complete with peak and RMS meters up top. Now, for those unfamiliar, a peak meter looks for and reports maximum volume levels to help monitor things like clipping, while an RMS calculates an overall average volume level for the track. These meters are fully customizable in the Options tab, which we will go over later. The module gain detects the gain output of the module you are currently using or tweaking, and the zero latency tab allows zero latency monitoring of your track mix. Here we have the six modules and you will notice that there are two dynamic sections for compression and gating. Taking a closer look, you will see the common parameters such as knee, threshold, attack, release, and ratio controls. Alloy 2 compressors also, however, include a digital and vintage mode, wherein digital will give you a more precise reaction to your parameters and vintage will give you a more variable or relaxed reaction to your parameters, emulating the behavior of vintage compressors. Also included is a multi-band mode that allows you to isolate up to three different sections of the EQ bandwidth by setting these markers where you wish and individually enhancing or affecting the section of bandwidth that you choose. You can also link the bands to affect all bands with one set of controls. For each band, there will be another individual instance of the module that you're using. Multi-band is available in the Dynamics, Transient Shaper, and Exciter modules. Up top, we have the Gain Reduction Trace, which is a visual representation of the reduction or addition of gain being applicated in real time against the waveform of the original audio. There is also a detection circuit filter that filters what the compressor is hearing. This allows you to shape the frequency spectrum that the compressor will respond to. So while you can set the filter to roll off at 90 Hz, for instance, the compressor will still affect the full frequency spectrum coming into it, but your low end will affect the threshold of the compressor less. Hitting the Options tab and Dynamics tab gives you personalization options for the Dynamics module. For instance, utilizing a histogram to visualize signal level instead of a traditional meter. With two Dynamics modules, and this is very cool, you have the option for self-contained parallel processing in one channel strip. Setting up parallel dynamics is very simple. By opening the graph mode and clicking on a module, you will see that you can customize your signal chain of modules that you're using by clicking and dragging them to the desired point of the chain. To applicate parallel processing using the dual dynamics modules, you simply drag one module above the other. Two identical audio streams will be sent to each module where you can begin to process to your liking. However, it is recommended, of course, that you run both modules either in multi-band mode or single band modes, and your multi-band crossover points must be set the same to avoid phase issues. Moving on to the parametric EQ section, we have eight nodes that we can trigger each with an adjustable cue. Each node has six adjustable filters with variations on those filters. And of course, up top, we have the Spectrum Analyzer, which gives us a visual display of the frequencies that we may wish to address. Next, we have the Transient Shaping module, where you'll notice again we have a gain tracer and a crossover view because in the Transient Shaper, we have multi-band capability. The Transient Shaper is simple but effective, especially in drums, where you can adjust the attack and sustain to chop out room noise and enhance their percussive dynamic, as we will see in my audio example a bit later. A really fun module is the Exciter. Here you will utilize this XY pad to applicate to a greater or lesser degree four different types of emulated saturation. There is a drive control for how much breakup or overdrive you want in the signal, a mix control that lets you determine the amount of wet signal versus dry signal, and also a width knob which I found very effective in providing an authentic stereo spread that adds a really lush depth. Up top we have a post filter for shaping the output of the saturation and again we have multiband mode. The de is very straightforward in that it will take out unwanted harsh frequencies or sibilance in vocals, which you can visually trace with the gain tracer as you adjust the attack and release. Multi-band mode is available and definitely recommended for tuning out unwanted hiss. The limiter is truthfully one of the most effective and simple limiters I've ever used. The hard mode and soft mode are very responsive and to my ears actually add a bit of musicality to the limiter. Hard mode will act diligently to your settings and soft mode 
will vary slightly for a more natural feel. Stereo Link allows the left and right channels to be limited independently. There's also a phase rotation option for helping dialogue or voiceover mixes where asymmetrical wave shapes can be manipulated to let the voice perceivably ride higher in the mix. Lastly, each module is going to have an independent bank of presets, and overall, by hitting the global tab, you're going to find dozens of really helpful presets to get you started in shaping a mix for an entire track. I want to say that with other mixing and mastering plugins, there was a painful lack of usable presets, but I found with Alloy 2, Isotope has put some time into getting popular professional sounds dialed in for DIY enthusiasts who are looking for big sounds and great results on cutting-edge music, and not just cliche, traditional mix philosophy. That is a basic overview of Alloy 2, so let's move to a mix scenario and hear how Alloy 2 helps shape the direction of a mix. Okay, I'm going to be looping a section of this song. I want to note that I'm not constructing a final mix with this section. I'm simply showcasing the ease and quality with which Alloy 2 can improve the overall mix and help shape the final mix. I have a rhythm guitar track, drums, melody line, and bass. I have three tracks recorded in pan for rhythm guitars, and I've grouped them together in a bus with Alloy 2. Let's have a listen without Alloy. Now I'll bring it back in. You will hear more presence, clarity, and even a little more stereo spread thanks to the width knob in the Exciter. With the EQ, I've boosted the mids and highs for more chord definition and overall sheen. Here's without the EQ. Bring it back in. With the exciter, I have the saturation dialed in all the way over to the warm area as it sounds best in context to my ears, but let's have a listen to what the other saturation types sound like. I have the saturation just slightly boosted because I want the effect to be subtle. Quickly, let's have a listen to the effect of the stereo spread when using the width knob. So without exciter, and back in. Next, I'm using multi-band mode with the compressor and the dynamics to give just a subtle boost to all frequencies, and I'm basically using the compressor in this case as glue. You can hear as I turn it on and off that the frequencies are more balanced and cohesive. Lastly, with the limiter, just a slight boost for overall punch and presence. Subtlety is key, so again, here are the guitars without alloy too. And back in. For the drums, I've paired the kick and the snare together in a bus with Alloy 2. Without Alloy, you can hear a lot of room ambience and a slappy sounding kick and focused but thinner sounding snare than I want in the song. Looking at the EQ, I've boosted a bit of upper low end to add punch to the kick. As a consequence, you also get a bit of a roundness and punch to the snare. I've boosted the mids slightly to emphasize snap in the snare. The transient shaper is where the magic happens. Listen as I adjust the attack and sustain.
The room noise drops and the drums pop out with a bit more punch and focus. Last again is the limiter to prevent clipping and to give me a little extra gain. The melody guitar came out fairly nicely on the take, so I've simply boosted the upper mids just a bit and applied some compression to the mids to help the melody become a bit more of the foundation of the section instead of simply cutting through. Have a listen to the bass. Again, already a pretty solid take, but it could use some girth. Since bass is a tricky thing to sculpt in a mix, I acquiesced to an Alloy 2 preset, picked electric bass, which added a healthy bottom without overwhelming, and a bit more mid presence to help pick attack and give more note articulation. So let's hear the mix without Alloy 2. And now Alloy 2 applicated. Thanks for checking out this review. For more information on Alloy 2, head over to www.isotope.com and be sure to check out the written review on live4guitar.com. I'm Tim Carter. We'll see you next time.